right, so we're back at the shop. Here is the DCCD Pro Spider controller, not to be confused with the Spider Pro. There are three tiers. There is a manual controller, a Spider controller, and a Spider Pro. Um, the manual is just that. You just turn a knob and it pulls with, modulates the center diff to whatever you select. The Spider uses a um, G4 sensor. Um, and then you can also switch it to manual, you can turn the knob and make it more aggressive. Um, so it's a little bit, and it uses a throttle input too. The Spider Pro does all of the stuff the Spider does, but then it also taps into vehicle speed and ABS wheel speed sensors. So it's a little bit better, it can better replicate the OEM control, um, but this should be good enough. I'm not, not trying to go hog wild with it, um, but let me pull up the install sheet. All right, so the instructions aren't very clear, um, but this is, I guess what they call it, the basic unit with no left foot brake or vehicle speed sensor option. Um, so we've got six wires on there, which can confirm six wires. Also, you wanna wear gloves because static discharge through the wires can fry the module. So we don't wanna do that. Um, red is gonna be our key on power. Green is going to be our ground, which is a little confusing because there's a black wire, and you would normally think that that's ground, but so red and green. Um, then we've got black and white are going to go to the DCCD. Uh, brown is going to go to the parking brake, and blue is going to go to the throttle position sensor. That's going to be a little tricky because I'm pretty sure that the 08 to 14s have two throttle position sensors. One switches from low to high, and the other switches from high to low. Not 100% sure, but I'm going to look at the ECM pinout and see what I can find. Um, but, so with that, let's get started. They want you to mount this underneath the, uh, the, like the kick panel or the, the knee panel under the steering wheel. I don't think I'm going to mount mine there because I already have a bunch of other stuff there. So, I'm going to mount mine, I think, inside the center console because I don't want to use it. Uh, but you may choose to mount it somewhere else. So the first thing I did was remove the knob using a 564th Allen key in the side of the knob that pulled right off. Um, we're gonna need to mount those. I'm looking at the, the button and the display. This is gonna require a very precise hole because there's very little margin for error being that there's not a very large lip on this side. So we're gonna have to be really careful about the hole size. Um, and it is nice that they give you these connectors, although I wish they just gave us a little click connector like a standard automotive connector, but it is what it is, so I'm going to start drilling holes and getting all that set up. Okay, I'm going to start by removing this panel here. This piece here just pulled right off, and then we've got two Phillips head screws, and then I think the rest just pulls off. There are a couple connectors for these buttons. I've also marked locations of where I want my DCCD controller to go, so... I'm gonna pull that off. Okay, so I'm missing a lot of drill bits, uh, but I'm starting with a 15 64ths. Um, it looks like it's just a hair smaller than this, which is good because I want to start with a smaller one. I just used a little screwdriver to pop those out so they're separated. Um, and this might get in the way, so I might need to trim that down a little bit, but you can see my marks. Uh, now I want the knob on the bottom so it's a little bit more out of the way and then the uh, LED on top. So I just put a little divot there and there where I want them and I'm going to start drilling. Alright, so I used a razor blade to grind that spot down and I upped the size to a 17 64th and now it fits in there. Oh, come on like a glove. Actually, I need to go a little bit bigger so the threaded end will fit because uh, the threads need to protrude to the outside, but it's very close. Now, if you'll notice, there's a little there's a little tab that sticks up. Now, that's going to stop this from spinning when you turn the knob, so I need to make a second hole for that. Okay, so I drilled a 1 8 hole. It's the smallest drill bit I had. Um, here we go. And it worked out. Kind of perfect. It's hard to see the camera and the stuff I'm doing at the same time, but look, pokes right in the hole. Right in there. Now it won't be able to spin when you turn the knob, so the knob will actually control the potentiometer, not spin it. 
All right, after a couple tries, I got it as close as possible. It does almost a full turn, but looks good to me. Now onto the LED. It's a little off, but whatever. I'll live with it. So the LED was tricky. I had to use a stepped drill bit. Came out to 11 16 that hole, and it, and it went in nicely. Uh, and the step bit actually gave it a nice chamfer for the O-ring to sit into, so that way it's nice and flush. And I just tightened that nut down with my fingers because I don't want to rip it through. Because, like I said, that, that lip on the outside is so small, you know, you don't want to pull it through. So, looks pretty clean. Almost OEM. Eh, maybe a little bit off-center, but oh well. So I needed both hands to do it, so I couldn't get it on video, but the 12-volt um, outlet plug, it is key on power. It turns on, it's hot in accessory and on, um, so it'll power up an accessory or key on. I don't know about crank, uh, but that doesn't really matter as long as it's got power um, while the car is running and not when the car is off, then you're good. So I'm going to plug it into there. Uh, I'm going to try to get the center console out so I can modify that for my mounting and all that. So. Let's do that now. I'm just gonna drill a big hole right here for the wires to go through. I've got some Velcro command strips that I'm gonna use to mount the module to the side inside there. So I'm gonna do that. All right, I uh, oblonged, oblonged the hole a little wider because I realized that the G sensor needed to go through there. I'm assuming that wire is supposed to, or that arrow is supposed to point forward. Uh, also, for some anti-chafing, I put some heater hose around. I'm going to tape that on once I get it installed. So now let me feed that in. All right, to be honest with you all, barely fit, but I got it in. The wires, they look like they're pulled pretty hard, but they're not. They're, they're thin wires, so they bend pretty easy. Um, got everything coming out the hole. That heater hose is just sitting in there pretty. Um, put a little tape on there just so it doesn't move. Now for the fun part. And also, because this is Velcroed on, I can pull it off to get to that lower bolt there. No big deal. Okay, so underneath the car, here are two DCCD wires. We got black and green, and thankfully I had a black and green wire to solder to them. Now this is going to be nerve-wracking, but we're going to zip tie it to the reverse lockout and then have it go through the grommet right there. It's going to be very close to the drive shaft though, so we're going to make sure we zip tie it multiple places so that it cannot move at all. Okay, so I didn't film it, but I taped the wires to a mechanics wire. This is a stiff just wire. Uh, you could use like a coat hanger or something. And then with the end taped, I pushed it through the hole. I still got to pull the black through a little bit more because that one's still got some slack on it, but I zip tied these babies every step of the way steered them clear of everything this although it looks like a shifter linkage it's actually not it's the it's the brace that holds the shifter base stable so this doesn't actually move um, the only thing that moves is this up here and that's why the factory uses a clamp to hold this cable to it now got everything tightly put up there there's good clearance around uh, like I said, just got to pull the slack through and then it should be good. So yeah, now to work on the inside of the car once more. Okay, so we're getting close to be able, being able to install everything. Um, that's going to be our powering ground. Uh, these connectors are going to plug back into the center console. This is our DCCD. Our brown wire is going to hook up to the e-brake wire. Um, so... We're getting there. We have to mount our G-sensor. Here is the factory G-sensor, which is this is pretty close to the center of gravity. I may just double-sided tape my G-sensor directly on top of this one. I don't think they'll interfere at all, um, but you want to mount it as close to the center of gravity as possible, and that's where that is. So um, I'm going to start doing some other stuff. We're going to have to get a TPS wire from the ECU, and we're going to have to extend the wires for the knobs and whatnot. But that said, we are getting somewhere. All right, guys, so a quick little update. Um, moving through this, gonna be honest, installing it under the center console may have been a bad idea because now the center console is in the way while I'm trying to work on it. Um, here's my DCCD 
wires, um, black and white out of the controller and black and green out of the transmission. Here is my power and ground. Um, yellow is key on power to red and this black one is my ground to the green wire on the controller. Um, I've got my e-brake wire on there. So that is five of six wires. The last one is this blue wire, which is gonna go to the throttle position sensor. Then I still need to mount my G sensor and then I need to extend the wires going to my control knob and um, the button. So that's what those two green connectors are, but I'm just about done uh, with all the under center console wiring. So then I can bolt the center console back in. It'll be a lot less overwhelming because right now, I'll be honest with you, this is a nightmare. Um, but yeah. All right, one more status update. Got my button and my knob. Got it all wired up. I had to use different color wires, so this is going to be confusing as hell, but I had to extend them to reach those green connectors there. Um, so I gotta run those through. I left them extra long just in case. Should be plenty, so let's do that. Okay, so back again. Another uh, coat hanger trick here. I'm gonna pull my wires through. I need two hands for this, but that's the, that's the idea. Run the wires through there. Okay, so my control wires, which you can see through here, um, have run all the way across. And they are into the green connectors. The last wire is the blue TPS wire. And then I can zip tie everything up, and I also have to fasten my uh, G sensor right here. I'm gonna use some tape or glue or something, who knows, or Velcro, who knows what. Um, but so far, so good. I don't know if anything's gonna work yet, but we're almost ready to find out. Okay, and last is possibly the worst part. I'm under the passenger side carpet on the floor here, taking out this metal plate. Uh, and here we found the ECU. There is apparently a white wire in there. I think I see it that we want to tap into for uh, the um, throttle position sensor that uh, DCCD uses. So that is why we're here. We're going to take the ECU out. You should disconnect your battery before doing this. Okay, so now the ECU is upside down. So we're talking about the connector that is closest to me, to the camera. Flip it over. And right here, I'm turn the light on. It's this white wire here. There's a blue wire just below that, because remember this is the bottom, and then a yellow green wire next to that. So it's right here. Now I've traced that down, cut it uh, on both ends, and I'm going to splice the uh, DCCD in there, um, and then put everything back together and it should be good to go. All right, uh, don't mind that hill assist light, not really sure what's going on with that. Currently have my G sensor just taped down right there. I'm pretty sure that thing's got to be mounted dead level and all that. So I'm not really sure where I'm going to permanently mount it. And I'm pretty sure this panel that goes here won't fit with that there. But job for another day. I'm all out of time. I was a little worried because I was getting nothing out of the knob or out of the LED. But then I remembered if the e-brake's up, it disables it. So put the e-brake down. And... You see how it's like flickering a little bit? That means you're in auto mode. If I press it, it'll come on solid as manual mode, and then you just turn the knob based on where you want it. But uh, I'll put it on auto. And yeah, that's it. So it's all done. When I get that shipped cover back on, it'll be a seamless install. Kind of just hanging out in there, but you know, no wires anywhere. Everything looks good. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Honestly, it took me about four and a half, maybe even close to five hours to do everything. Um, you know, locate which wire was the TPI. I had to do a lot of testing and a lot of uh, taking stuff apart, putting it back together, taking it apart again. Uh, if I did it the second time, I could probably do it a little bit quicker, but the uh, job was definitely a bear, so keep that in mind. It's going to take quite some time. Uh, but anyway, 
say please if this video was helpful please give a thumbs up and if you want to subscribe i've got a lot a lot more videos like this coming